I'm going to start by, um, in an unconventional manner, by um, thanking the staff of Luminous Art Museum, in particularly in particular Esther Larue and uh, Sabata and Patti. Um, the two of them and their teams were fantastic. It was an absolute pleasure working with them over the past three and a half days. This is one of the best um, teams that we've worked with since um, I've started working with Josie on this on the on the tour of this retrospective. So, for in honour and celebration and thankfulness um, for the sterling work that this team does, I'd like you ask to I'd like you all to give them a round of applause, please. Um, okay, so I didn't know where to start with this opening talk, <clears throat> so I thought I'd start on a personal note, um, where I first got um, to um, understand, get to know the work of Jody Bieber. Um, I met Jody in, I think, 1996, when I became a student at the Market Photo Workshop, and Jody was one of their teachers. And I enrolled in this course, in this advanced photography course, and the, the crux of it was choosing a project and then exploring, over the period of a year, that project. And Jody set the theme for that year, and there were, I think there were six or seven students in that, in that class. And the theme that Jody set for that year was called Love, Friendship, Family. Love, Friendship, Family. And everybody, without exception, in that group of students interpreted that by photographing their families, photographing their neighbours, um, photographing extended family members. Um, and after a while, I didn't know of Jodie's work then, when I first met her, and after a while I started having a look at the work that she was producing and understanding that Jodie's idea of love, friendship, family was not necessarily anybody else's idea of love, friendship, family. Whilst we were exploring familial links, emotional links, Jodie's idea of love, friendship, family was, it, was in exploring the gangs of Westbury, a notorious gang-ridden, drug-ridden, um, abuse-laden community in um, the west of Johannesburg. And at the same time that the students were exploring this familial love, friendship, family, Jody was exploring the politics of love, friendship, family. How people express their emotions, how they express their affinity, how they express their love for each other within an environment that is fraught with violence, that is fraught with prostitution, that is fraught with gangsterism. And for a number of years, Jody worked in this community in Westbury. No, not for a number of years, for one year, Jody worked in this community, photographing the gang members, photographing their intimate partners, photographing their children, photographing the people that they came into action, into action with, photographing um, fights between children as young as six years old using bottle, half broken bottles as weapons knives, guns, drugs, and in all of this, in all of this, um, in this milieu of violence, I suppose, um, Jody was looking for the elements of poetry, the elements of humanity, the, the, the elements of emotion um, that was seemingly so um, absent from media representations of this community. And that is where I first got, um, got to know the work of Jody. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, the Westbury series forms part of a greater series that eventually became a publication and a major exhibition called Between Dogs and Wolves, Growing Up with South Africa. And um, that, I suppose, can be described as the start of Jodie's um, career as a photo documentary photographer. Prior to that, she'd studied photography. Prior to that, she worked as a press photographer at the Star newspaper. And it was there that she became um, friends and colleagues and shooting partners with what became known as the Bang Bang Club. Uh, people like Kevin Carter, people like Kevin Oosterbroek, and Jody became one of this group of photographers who was very active in the, 19, the late 1980s and the late 1990s in documenting exactly what was happening in townships in South Africa, in um, neighborhoods that were fraught with the, with the what would become the vestiges of uh, the horrors of apartheid. And that is where Jody developed a very distinctive visual language, a visual language that moved fluidly between um, poetry on the one hand and hardcore photo documentary, social documentary on the other. Um, that is the work that Jody first became known for. That is the work that was published in a monograph, as I mentioned, Between Dogs and Wolves. And that is the work that first uh, brought Jody to not only South African attention, but also international attention. And that was the body of work that I first got to know Jody with. It was 
um, stark, it was real, it was laden with emotion, um, and it didn't shy away from, <clears throat> from the hard-edged um, repercussions of the horrors of apartheid. Um, since then, we've worked together very closely. I followed her career very closely, um, and we've been friends and, I suppose, colleagues since then. Um, and Jody is one of the people that I deem as most formative um, in my work as a curator also. Jody's work has been formative in, I suppose, my interest in tracking the shifts in, pho in photography in South Africa. I'm, I'm just going to read this bit, if I may. This is a description that Jody and I collaborated on writing in trying to describe, trying to make sense of what essentially is um, a body of work that spans between 15 and 20 years, which is the mid-career retrospective that we see here, between darkness and light. I'll read this. The visual poetry and politics of humanity is the enduring focus of photographer Jody Bieber. Maybe I should point out Jody Bieber. Wave. <laughs> That's my friend Jody. The visual poetry and politics of humanity is the enduring focus of photographer Jody Bieber. And in a country like South Africa, with its violent history of apartheid, its ambivalent tra transition to democracy, and its fraught position today, there is no greater opportunity to envision the effects of these three very different periods on the people that call this country home. Between darkness and light, Bieber's mid-career retrospective spans the years from 1993 until 2014. The exhibition includes photographs from pivotal projects with work selected from both celebrated and rarely seen series to demonstrate visually the artist's tra trajectories of language. Um, I mentioned earlier that um, in a close study of Jody's work over the past 15 years has been formative in my reading of um, the changing landscape of photography in South Africa. And Jody, more than any other photographer in this, in, in this country, epitomizes the shift, the radical shift in photographic language, <clears throat> excuse me, in photographic language um, over the past 15 years. Um, she started off, as I mentioned, doing um, really in-depth social analysis through photo documentary. Um, and that became the formative basis for what eventually would lead over 15 years to <clears throat> a more gentle exploration of Jodie's identity, of herself um, as, a, as a person growing up, in, as a person maturing, as a person growing older within this country, and eventually leading to what defines her current interest today, and has been defining her current interest for the past two or three years, which is an exploration of media stereotypes. In the same way that Jodie's work with the gangs in Westbury, with the work that is shown in Between, Dog, Between Dogs and Wolves, in the same way that that work um, is an exploration of identity within a context, so Jody's work today is an exploration of how those media stereotypes define people, in the same way that media stereotypes internationally showed people or attempted to show people one very, one very um, narrow view of South African apartheid, of guns, of gangsters, of violence, of abuse, of human rights abuses. It is within that that there is a path that can be traced that is emotional, that is sensitive, um, and that is um, um, emotional and sensitive to the context. Jody's work today challenges those very media stereotypes that she, that she started off trying to um, challenge with between dogs and wolves. Um, there's a clear linear progression through this exhibition um, and there's a leaflet um, which is available at the front so um, which also forms the, um, the guide through the exhibition. So I encourage you all as you walk through the exhibition to please read the text um, it's, been it's been edited so as to give a very clear layperson's narrative of what essentially is um, international photographic language. Real Beauty is an installation that we did upstairs where Jodie takes her own identity as a maturing person within her body, becoming comfortable within her body and looking at that in a political context. And what she does with that directly is challenges media stereotypes of what is beauty, of what is considered beautiful, of what is considered the epitome of femininity. So in the same way that Between Dogs and Wolves tries to decipher um, 
what it is like to be a human being within a fraught environment, so too does real beauty try to decipher what it is like being a person maturing, being a woman maturing within these media stereotypes that we are bombarded with of what is the ideal feminine beauty. I mentioned that there are three distinct periods in Jodie's work and what this mid-career retrospective attempts to do is tries to plot the trajectory of her change, tries to plot the shifts in her visual language, tries to show the changes in her concerns um, and m very importantly shows clearly the shift in photography from um, analog photography, from black and white traditional analog web-based photo print photography um, into more contemporary digital work and into more contemporary um, video work. Um, and um, jo and this, the, the, the retrospective shows that. It shows the radical shift that there has been in the technical field of photography, it shows the radical shift that there's been in the conceptual fields of photography, and it shows the shift in, in Jody's personal interests. Um, so a mid-career retrospective is really important for artists in a general sense and more specifically in Jody's case it is really important, this mid-career is really important because of the radical shifts that um, Jody has gone through and with each passing year, with each new body of work she reinvents herself, she reinvents her visual language, she changes slightly the materials and the media that she works with, she changes the body of works and how they are installed, she plays with different forms of showing the work. So a mid-career retrospective is really important um, in that sense. Um, this exhibition was first commissioned by um, and produced by Museum Ulm in Germany and thereafter moved to Museum Goch also in Germany and these are two really important museums that focus, that have a very important focus on um, both the um, stimulation and the collection of contemporary photography. Um, the exhibition then moved to South Africa and I've been working with Jody since the, since the beginning of her leg um, of the exhibition in of the exhibition tour in South Africa. It opened at the Wits Art Museum, which I wasn't involved in, moved to the National Arts Festival in Grahamstown two years ago, moved to the South African National Gallery in Cape Town thereafter, and, um, um, and is now here at the Ibanez Art Museum. I'm going to end on a quote from Jody. Through my projects, I face the harshness that so many people encounter and the resilience of the human spirit. I've learned that we all have two sides and, depending on the changing circumstances of our lives, one side might overshadow the other. And this statement provided the basis for the title of the exhibition, Between Darkness and Light. Between Darkness and Light, effectively, is an extension of Between Dogs and Wolves, to show the ambivalence, the moving between two very different phases, <clears throat> where um, someone's circumstances um, in one sense might dictate how they behave, what their identity is, what sort of endeavors they undertake, whilst in a very different set of circumstances or with the same set of circumstances with a different person, a very different tra trajectory may be formed. So um, <clears throat> that is the crux of this mid-career retrospective, this move between light and dark, this move between dogs and wolves, this move between direct polar opposites and trying to find a way to negotiate um, how to move between the harshness of real life and the poetry of humanity. Thank you. Thank you.